Hey guys, it's Mr. Decker. We're back and we're in the computer science discoveries curriculum from code.org. We're looking at lesson 20 collision detection. We're on bubble one. All right, dinner time. Run the program to see the robot bring the bunny dinner. When the bunny reaches the bowl, they both stop walking and the bowl becomes empty. What code do you think would help the computer know if two sprites were touching? So if we run this, the bunny and the robot walk towards each other. As soon as they're touching, the soup or stew disappears. So the code that helps the computer know if the sprites are touching is literally the is touching block. Let's finish and continue. On to bubble two. We're going to be using that sprite is touching block quite a bit moving forward. All right, using math to figure it out. Computers use math to figure out whether two things are touching. Look at the math on line 17 and 18 of this program to see how the sprite properties are compared with their width to see whether they're touching. All right. So here's the math that's being completed to see if the bunny is touching the dinner. And it looks very complicated. You can tell uh, because look at all of these that have been embedded in here and built on top of each other. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight expressions that are being checked just to see if the bunny is touching the dinner. And that is way too much, way too hard. Okay. Uh, read the if statements inside the draw loop and find a different and find the different sprite properties and how they're compared. So we're looking at bunnies x and dinners x, and bunnies x minus dinner x is and less than bunny width and dinner width and yeah, it's a lot. So uh, why does the code only use width and x properties and not the height and y properties? Uh, the if statement only uses x and width properties because the money and dinner sprites are only moving on x and we don't uh, and their height has no bearing on when they are touching. There you go. That's the explanation in a nutshell. Would I want to ride this code every time I checked whether something was touching? The answer to that question is absolutely not. Exclamation point. So let's run it. It's the same program we looked at before. Here's how that's working. Let's finish. Let's continue. Let's learn how to do this code. All right. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Everything's going to be OK. Mr. Decker's here. I'm going to teach you how to do this. You're going to be all right. Writing out the math each time you want to check whether two sprites are touching can take a while. So a programmer created the is touching block which can check whether one sprite is touching another sprite, the target. The computer is still doing the same math that we saw in the previous program, but we don't have to worry about it because another programmer already did that work for us. Thank you, previous programmer man, lady, person. I super appreciate you. All right, do this. Check if the bunny is touching the dinner. All right. So if blank. And then we've got, and then, uh, okay, so if bunny is touching dinner, grab fat is touching block, we put it inside our if statement. So we're asking if the bunny is touching the dinner, then we stop everything. When they touch, everything stops. So the bunny's velocity x is zero, dinner's velocity x becomes zero, the robot's velocity x becomes zero, and the dinner set animation to bowl instead of being set to stew. 
and then we run it. And that's way easier and way simpler, right? Just this right here. If Bunny is touching dinner, instead of all of this garbly gook that we looked at on line two, can you imagine, right? If I was to make you do all of that instead of just his touching block. Thank goodness. I told you everything was going to be okay. I told you I was going to show you how to do it. You didn't believe me. You were scared. You were petrified. But now you are reassured. You are confident. Your eyes are clear. Let's go. All right. Applesauce. In this program, the blender should only turn on when the apple touches it. Right now, that blender is running. And the apple is just doing its thing. All right. Let's see. So here is the code that's making the apple fall down the screen. Apple.velocityy gets a value of 5. And then we have blender.x gets 200 plus a random number in this range, negative 5 to 5. All right. So they're going to ask us to do some stuff. Check if the apple is touching the blender. So we're going to grab an if statement and check exactly that. We're going to go to sprite drawer, grab sprite is touching. And we're checking if the apple is touching the blender. And if it is, we're going to change the sprite and the target to the correct sprite names. So, huh? I mean, basically, we want to do this, right? So if the apple is touching the blender, then the blender's x gets 200 plus random. So run. And the blender now shakes while the apple is touching it. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I was skipping some stuff. So change the sprite and the target to the correct sprite names. We did that. Apple is touching blender. And then make the blender shake only when the apple is touching it. Move the line of code that shakes the blender into the if statement. We did that. And optional, you may also want to hide the apple when it touches the blender. So we're going to do that too. Sprite.visible, apple.visible equals false. I also want to copy this code right here, apple.velocityy, control C after highlighting it with the lasso method. And I'm going to move my cursor all the way down here, control V. I'm going to change this to zero. So that once the apple is touching the blender, it disappears and you won't be able to see it falling through the blender anymore. And that makes sure that the apple continues to touch the blender. And I guess we're just going to be blending that apple forever because that's what we told our program to do. All right. So for those extra credit points, right, make sure your apple.visible gets false is inside your if statement asking if the apple is touching the blender. And change the apple's velocity to zero inside there as well. And that will ensure that you get this cool animation. Let's finish and continue. We're on to bubble five. Moving right along here. Oh, sorry, we couldn't load animation tack. It looks like we're having trouble loading, loading your animation tack. Make sure you have a good internet connection. Let's reload the page. I've never seen that before. Hmm. Weird. Okay, delete the tack. Couldn't animate balloon or popped. What is happening? Weird. Version history, start over. Huh. Reload page. Super weird. Um, hmm. Well, that kind of bursts our bubble on being able to do this bubble, bubble number five, because it's deleting all of my animations that I need. Uh, let's see if we can do it anyway. Let's see. 
hang on just a sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here and see if I can get this working. All right, so I had to set this up a little differently since none of those sprites were populating over here. So I went on the internets and I was able to locate a balloon attack and a popped. Yours is going to look different from mine, but this is going to operate in the same fashion so we can do the same things. Uh, if yours is not working, then you'll have to improvise like I did. If it is working for you, which I hope it is, uh, by the time you get to this code.org, hopefully has fixed the problem. Uh, you'll be able to do this very simply and not have to add the animations. All right, we're going to run the code and use the arrow keys, <clears throat> excuse me, to move the tack to the pop, to pop the balloon. So when I run it, see, I can maneuver my tack around. I'm going to move it towards my balloon. Oh, and it actually pops well before I get to it. So the collision detection clearly needs some work. So it says on... Step two, change the code in line four from false to true. Here's line four, false, true. The line should now be balloon.debug gets true. Okay, and then we're gonna debug the tax sprite. We're gonna drag out, and we can see the hitbox now of this balloon, by the way. Lines it in green. And then set the tack sprite debug property to true. So uh, tack, here's sprite.debug, tack.debug, true, reset run. Now we can see the collision detection box for the tack. All right. Run the code again. Discuss with your partner why the balloon is popping early. So if we run this down here, as soon as the green touches the green, that's when it pops. Uh, resize the balloon animation to fix this. Go into the animation tab, and then we're gonna crop the balloon sprite. So here's the balloon sprite. Notice it has this big box around it. If your sprite has this big box around it, that is also a part of the sprite. So if I hit this crop button right here, oh no. Um, hmm. Let me get rid of some of this balloon then. Since we are improvising, we're running into problems. Here's my eraser tool. Let's get rid of all of this. And now it should crop. Still not cropping. Why you no croppy? Come on, man. Just crop. Hmm. Honestly, not sure why it's not cropping further than this. It should be. Hmm. All right, so code.org, this bubble is messed up, OK? So anyway, that's how you do it. You go into animation for any sprite, except that balloon, apparently. You hit that crop button, and it's a... Now it works? <laughs> okay. This bubble is having some issues. All right, so now it's cropped. We go back to the code. We run it again, and now you can see that it's way more accurate, right? So now when I get the tack down there, it fixes. Okay. Oh, my goodness. That was painful. All right. Sorry about how that worked out. Wasn't my fault. Wasn't my doing. But you understand. And there wasn't really that much code to change anyway. You probably are not seeing scale on yours if yours is working. Uh, the code that's important is just the debug true for the balloon and the tack, I'm going to the animation tab and making sure 
that you've cropped your balloon by going to the balloon sprite here and then clicking that button over there. Goodness. All right, continue. Let's do bubble six. All right, on bubble six, debug is touching. All right, so we're going to debug this. Get that out of the way. The bunny sprite should change to a new animation when it touches the sun sprite. We're going to figure out why the bunny doesn't react to the collision. We're going to run the program and read over the code to figure out what's wrong. And then modify the code so that the collision is detected within the draw loop. So we're going to run this. And the bunny is just sad. OK, so if sun is touching bunny is right here on line 5, that's not working. Let's put it inside the draw loop and see if that fixes it. Yes, it does. The bunny is super excited about the sun. The very angry sun touching it. All right, animation, how does that bunny work? We've got one frame, and then Bunny Happy has two frames to animate. One where his feet are together and one where his feet are out. And the sun has two animations where it just changes where his little spikies are. All right. Let's continue. Goodness. Thankfully, so far, everything other than Bubble 5 is working. Hopefully that remains true. These coins are supposed to stop when they touch, but the colliders are the wrong shape. Do this. Change the collider of each coin to a circle. Okay. Right now... Oh, cool. They're spinny. Right now they're squares, but because they're circular objects, we want their collision uh, or hit detection to be circular instead of square. That makes sense to me. Okay, so change the collider of each coin to a circle. Drag out a set collider block for coin one. So set collider is in our sprite drawer. Here's set collider for coin one. Uh, and instead of a rectangle, we're going to choose circle here. And then we're going to do the same thing for coin two. Coin two, set collider to a circle. All right, and then when we run it, now our colliders are circular. So depending on what your object looks like, you'll want to create a circular or square collision detection. So I can copy that actually and go back to the messed up bubble five. And I can add this to the code for the balloon. And you'll be able to see what that looks like for the balloon. And you can even go further and grab some more parameters. And you can actually control more about uh, the way that works, but we'll do that later. For now, I'm happy with that just being a circle. Let's go back to six. All right, circle colliders. Let's make sure we turn that green because we finished it. Run, finish, continue. And we're on 6C now, the scared mouse. All right, let's see. The scared mouse, right now the mouse sprite runs across the screen right in front of the cat. Use an is touching conditional to cause several things to happen. The mouse turns around and runs the other way, and the cat looks down at the mouse, and the cat meows. Okay, make sure my volume is up so we can hear that cat meow. Do this, run the program or sorry, program the mouse to run the other way and the cat to look down and meow if the mouse is touching the cat. We're going to drag out an if statement inside the draw loop. Here's the draw loop. Control drawers where those if statements live. And then it says to use an is touching block. So sprites, sprite is touching target. 
We're going to set the mouse as the sprite and the cat as the target. And then inside the if statement, we're going to set the animation of the cat to the alternate cat animation. So set animation of the cat to the cat meow. And we're going to set the animation of the mouse to face the other way. Mouse, mouse left. And then we're going to set the mouse's velocity to go left at a fast speed. So velocity x, mouse velocity x, negative 8, let's say. And then use the play sound block to play the sound of a cat meowing. So world play sound, and we're going to go looking for a sound, choose meow, cat, there we go, that'll work, choose, and we run it, <laughs> there we go, that's a very muddled meow, but that's the sound bite we have. If you change this to true, check out what happens. Right. Obviously, unless you just really want to annoy everyone in the room. <laughs> Keep that as false. All right, we're going to finish right there and continue. Uh, let's go to bubble seven, it looks like. Finish. We did A, B, and C. Oh no, bubble seven. Please, bubble seven. No, bubble seven. Oh no. All right. Uh, reload. What is going on with collision detection today, code.org? I have to delete my unicorn. I have to delete my horse and my rainbow. And so I've got to, okay. Okay, um, hang on, I'll be back. All right, we're back. We had to go over here and add a horse, a rainbow, and a unicorn to our animations tab. We're gonna change the horse into, into a unicorn when the rainbow touches it. My code looks a little different from yours because I had to add scale to the rainbow and the horse. But basically, we need an if statement. If sprites. Right is touching. If rainbow is touching horse, then we're going to set the horse animation to the unicorn. Run it. And there you go. Reset run. The horse becomes a unicorn as soon as that rainbow touches it. Woof. All right. Man alive. So there you go. That's how that works. Hopefully bubble seven is working for you. Continue. All right. So let's work on collider at an angle. And get this out of the way. We're going to angle the collider to fit the rolling pin. So we're going to make sure that we've got everything working. When I run it right now, it's a huge collision box or hit box for that rolling pin and not the right angle, not the right shape even. Uh, so let's get this fixed. So set collider with multiple parameters set collider can make can take more parameters than just the shape it also takes parameters to specify the x y offset width and height and angle that's a lot of information uh, do this use the set collider with six parameters so sprites uh, set collider right here match it to the roller 
We want that to be a rectangle still. We're going to add some parameters down here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Hover over the set collider block in the inside the toolbox to see an example of how to do this. So set collider, we've got type, which is rectangle, and then x offset, y offset, width, radius, height, and rotation offset. So let's get these numbers in here. So we're going to put 0 and 0 there, and then 33 for the width to so reset run. Oh, I've got to fill everything in apparently. 178 for the height and 30 for the angle. Reset run and it's perfect. So to get yours, you click that extra parameter button and these values again, 0, 0 for the X and Y offset 33 for the width, 178 for the height, and 30 for the angle. Now, if I did like 60 here, you'll see the difference. See? So that's playing with the angle. Set that back to 30. If I change 178 to like 400, you see the height changed. So we'll change that back, 178. And then 33 is the width. So if I, whoop, don't, didn't mean to grab that. So if I change the width to 60, just for an example, you'll see the width change there. Change that back to 30. Oh, or wait, 33, wasn't it? Yeah, 33. And you understand how those work. So you can have even more accurate collision detection, like back for the balloon, right? You would just change the width, probably. All right, just a little further to go here. We're going to do B and C as well. Add points on collision. So games often give you points when two sprites touch. This program does that, but notice what happens to the score as the sprites continue to touch. Your challenge is to get it so that only one point is scored. There are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest way is to move one or both sprites to a different location right when the score increases. So let's run the code, and we can move the ghost with our arrow keys. We've got points up here, so here's our score. When I move my ghost over the coin, I just can have as many points as I like because the coin isn't going anywhere when I touch it. So this if statement, if ghost is touching coin, points gets points plus one, right? Is causing us a little bit of a problem. So that's where our score is increasing. That's step two. And then we're going to add a line of code so at least one sprite moves to a new random location. We're going to move that coin uh, every time ghost is touching the coin. So sprites drawer, we're going to do sprite.x and sprite.y. We're going to do a random number block for both of these. And we're going to grab coin, control C, control V, and control V. Meanwhile, my score is just amazing. Uh, we're going to give this a range of 25 to 375, and 25 and 375 again. That ensures that the coin is at least somewhere on the screen, and it changes immediately. As soon as I touch it, it goes somewhere random, and I've got to go chase it down, and my Score only goes up by one each time I touch the coin now. All right, let's finish there. And we're going to complete C, if else challenge. We're going to use an if else statement to make the emoji either happy or sad. All right. So. Use an if else statement to change the emoji's mood based on if it is touching the donut or not. Do this. All right. 
we're going to add an if else statement to the draw loop. Control drawer, if else. All right, there's the code that's making things move. And then we're going to check to see is touching. Uh, let's see. Is touching. What do we have? We have the emoji and donut. If the donut is touching the emoji, All right, inside the if, set the animation of the emoji to be happy. Happy face. And set the visibility of the donut to false. So visibility of the donut, false, all use, false. Okay. Inside the else part, we're going to set the animation of the emoji to be sad. So emoji sad. Well, let's test it. So we're controlling <laughs> the super sad emoji. And then he becomes happy when we get the donut. If I'm apparently if I move him away from the donut, He's sad. Back to it. So the donut's still there. We just told it to be invisible. So that's working. All right, finish. Finish. Whew. That's it for me. We had to improvise a little bit, so it took a little longer than I anticipated, but we got it done, and you understand how to code it if it's working and if it's not working for you. Um, if you want to... Knock out either D, Food Combos, or E, Let's Play. And that's it for me. I'll see you right back here for Lesson 21.